So here we are with the FJ Cruiser. Let me bring you over and show you what we've done so far. So at this point we have the top of the engine cleared away. So the air box, the plastic intake, the radiator, the hoses, drive belt, everything has been cleared away. At this point I have invested roughly three hours taking my time going very slowly because a lot of the fasteners are quite rusty as you can see. So really spraying everything down, I don't want anything to snap. As far as I can tell, this vehicle just sat for some time. You can see there was a wasp's nest right here. I had another one on top of the condenser. So my guess is this being a 2007 with just 104,000 miles, this just sat and sat and sat. And someone recently got it up and running because the oil is clean, the brake fluid is clean, but the brake calipers are pretty rusty, which I'll show in another video. So at this point, I just want to get everything cleaned up. If you did not see the last episode, this has a trouble code for the camshaft and crankshaft correlation. So the timing is off, in other words. So I need to clean everything up and get access to the timing chain. So we're going to remove both valve covers. We have the coil packs to take off. Again, look how rusty these fasteners are. This thing just sat for some time. So clean it off with a wire brush. If I'm not mistaken, on the FJ, this is cylinder one, three, five, and then two, four, and six. So always label the coil packs, okay? Now check out these coil packs. No oil, no residue. I imagine these are original, all Toyota, so everything matches. And the quality, again, being a Toyota, no oil leaks, although this valve cover is coming off. Just no oil leaks, it's not burning oil. Really, really, that's just dirt up here. It's not an oil leak. Just really nice to see. Ain't nothing. There's nothing going on back here in terms of any oil leaks. But let's keep going. So it looks like we have 12 fasteners holding down each valve cover. I did scrape off any surface rust with a wire brush. But before we attempt to remove these fasteners, I, I'm just so nervous. I don't want anything to strip on me. So this is something that I've shown before, very similar to what airplane mechanics use. And it's essentially a solution. You can see here, inside the solution, we have metal flakes. And that provides a, uh, a higher gripping power, if you will, more grip. So these do not strip. So even inside, I did place a little bit around the fasteners, the circumference here, but even inside the socket here, I'll place a little bit of this solution so we have as much grip as possible. This one's a little stubborn, so I'll spray that down with some WD-40 or a liquid wrench. Now, if you ever do any work like this, the back fasteners can be a little tricky, and especially on a truck, I'm not that tall, and leaning over is just uh, starting to strain my back. So what you want to do is create a longer handle, okay? I need some really strong power. I can't use my fingers, I have to get my hands involved to loosen up this fastener. So just create a long handle. So something I've shown before, just a large socket, small extension, not a lot of working room. But with my right hand, I can press on the fastener, make sure that it does not strip. Now I have a, a, a slightly longer handle, and then I can crack this loose. Now we're rather lucky because these valve covers are metal, they're not plastic, like on many late model vehicles and even the Audi that I showed a few months back. So we can lightly tap around the perimeter and then just a small chisel, try to find any pressure point, and then just get 
this off here of the cylinder head. Now with both valve covers removed, we can certainly check, or at least get a general idea, if that trouble code that we saw last week for P0016 is correct. So that is a timing code correlation for bank one. Bank one is the passenger side. Now look at this chain right here. Look how loose this is, okay? Very, very loose. Now check out the other side. Much tighter much much tighter so it certainly seems that this timing chain has stretched I mean look at this a lot a lot of play so we need to clean up the entire front end of this engine so let's start with the thermostat housing just a couple of hoses running here I wasn't expecting that much. Let me grab a drain pan. Now sometimes it's tough to see where every fastener lives. So what I'll often do is jump online. This is off eBay. It's a used part. And I can see precisely where all of the fasteners live. Looks like there's an O-ring holding this on. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to tackle the oil filter housing here, or the assembly. And then I have some towels underneath because I don't want the oil to leak on the uh, AC compressor. So now we're going to remove the idler bearings. There's actually four, but one of them is the tensioner. Now, in order to remove the drive belt, this turns counterclockwise. So to loosen it, you have to turn it clockwise, okay? This one is tight. There we go. Whew. And as we wrap up this video, I just want to quickly note this as well. You want to keep all of your parts really organized. So the top two idlers are identical. Okay, the fasteners are exactly the same. Diameter, circumference of the bearings are exactly the same. Now the tensioner has a different fastener. Okay, so you don't want to mix it up. And then the bottom idler has a very long fastener so make sure you keep all of your parts really organized so that wraps it up for today as you can see we have a lot of parts laid out on the table and in the next episode we can remove this front timing cover really have clean access to the timing chain start ordering parts and get this up and running we're in november so my goal is i certainly want this up and running before the snow arrives so we really need to wrap this up rather quickly as always, I hope this is really fun, informational, and helps a number of you out there. And thank you for watching.